What's up guys? Uh, today I want to introduce you to what is team racing in sailing because it might be a little bit different than the racing you're used to. Now traditional sailing is called fleet racing or everyone for themselves and in team racing things look a little different so let's go over some of the differences and then I'll give a few pointers for how you can succeed. So first of all team racing uh, is three boats versus three boats. Uh, some formats of team racing could be two versus two, some could be four versus four, but for what we do in the U.S., in college and in high school, it's three boats against three other boats. Uh, we do it on the course called the Digital N, which is right here. So we'll start down here, we'll go up to mark one, we'll go to mark two on a reach, then we'll go back downwind to mark three, then another reach to mark four, and then a final upwind to the finish. Uh, the reason we do this course is it creates lots of opportunities for passing. You may notice that this rounding here at mark one is a starboard rounding as opposed to what we usually do in fleet racing, which is go to port. Uh, and this creates a lot of really interesting situations. Now let's talk about how team racing is scored. Team racing is scored by adding each team scores up at the end of each race and the lowest total wins. So right here, we have a one, three, six, versus a two, four, five. So let's add them up. So one plus three plus six equals 10. And on this side, two plus four plus five equals 11. 11, uh, and therefore, uh, the team on the left wins, okay? Uh, so how is a regatta score? You know, do we keep track of all our places? Well, that's only useful for tiebreakers, so let's not think about that at all. Uh, at the end of each race, we record uh, whether or not you won or lost. So if you win, you get a one more number in your wins column, and if you lose, you get one more number in your losses column. And at the end, everyone's ranked by their their uh, win and loss record. So team number one has won five races and lost two. Team number two has won four and lost three. And team in third place has won one race and lost six races. Um, hopefully this makes sense. Now, people who are a lot smarter than me found out a long time ago, it's a lot easier during a sailboat race to memorize winning combinations than to do the math. Like even there, you know, if you screw up the math, it can mess everything up. Um, and that's where we come up with something called plays, which we will discuss a lot later. Um, but basically, understanding and memorizing each combination will let you know what your roles are later on. So what do I mean, what are your roles? Well, in team racing, uh, unlike fleet racing, we not only have to choose where we go on the course, but we also have a decision over our speed. Uh, a lot of the times, boats will slow down to help their teammates. So uh, one good tip, is helping your teammates when they fall behind. Uh, if you're in first and your teammates are in fifth and sixth, then that is greater than 10 points. We always say 10 points or less. So if you're in first and your teammates are last, you're gonna lose the race, you have to turn around and try and help them. Well, how do we help our teammates? We can't just, you know, it's not Mario Kart, we can't just give them a power up or put an outboard on their uh, boat and make them go faster. We have to slow down our opponents to let our teammates catch up and hopefully pass, okay? So that's that. Uh, if you're winning, you just sail fast. And if you're losing, you wanna slow down the race by slowing your opponents. And this gives you more time and more opportunities to try and get one of your teammates ahead, okay? But before we go into plays and scheme and all these other things, we need to simply learn how do we slow our opponents to let our teammates pass. So the next video, we'll talk about slowing on the upward.